Welcome to the Bridge Church Midweek Podcast. We exist to connect people with others and God. We hope this week's episode helps you do just that. Enjoy. Hey everybody, Pastor Tyler Wolf here, and I am the campus pastor over at the Oconomowoc campus of Bridge Church, and it's good just to spend a moment here with you on the podcast uh, today. Uh, today, our SOAP reading, which is our church-wide daily one-chapter Bible reading, uh, is out of Hebrews chapter 4. Uh, let me ask you a question. Do you make your bed in the morning? I find that there's kind of there's usually two types of people, those who make their bed and those who don't. What about when you were a kid? We just added a short list of chores to my five-year-old's life, and one of those chores is make your bed every day. Why am I asking this? Well, I'll get back to that later. In Hebrews 4, the word rest is used many times, and it's used in three different ways. And these three different ways are the what, the why, and the how of Christian rest. So number one, rest is used in the context of what was promised to the nation of Israel. In this context, rest meant that they would occupy a new land called Canaan. They would be secure and protected, and they would not be at war, and that they would have God's presence. And this tells us that it is promised to us because it was promised to the Israelite people. This is the what. It's the goal of Hebrews chapter 4. The second context that the word rest is used is in reference to to something that God experienced. After God created the world and humanity, it said that God rested. And as his image bearers, we are meant to experience it, and we need it. This is why rest is so important. And finally, rest is used in the context of what's promised to us in Christ. The Israelites were promised security, protection, peace, and presence. This means in Christ we gain heaven, security, protection, because we are adopted into God's family, and we are carriers of God's presence through his Holy Spirit. This is how we will experience rest, through faith in Christ. So rest. It is the trademark of the Christian life. It's one of the things that sets apart Christianity from many other belief systems. Now, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11, we see an interesting paradox. It says, let us therefore strive to enter that rest. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest. It's interesting. Those seem contradictory. So how do you find rest? Just physically, like in your everyday life, practically. Is there any type of work that is restful to you? Because I find oftentimes the things that make people feel restful aren't actually innately restful, but they still help people find rest. My wife and I, we experience rest very differently. And there's some people that find certain types of work being restful. Maybe you're the type of person that feels very rested by organizing your basement or by cleaning your house. I'm not that person. Other people find rest by literally running or through exercise or through golfing. And so what might be restful work to one person might be not restful to another person. And I think it's helpful to think about Hebrews 4.11 in this way is that sometimes the work of the Christian life is restful work. It's a work to be rested. This is described in a different way in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 when it says, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. There's a theologian named Bruce Barton that puts it this way. We need to strive to obtain what is ours by promise, but not yet ours by experience. 
So if I tell you that I promise you that if you come over to my house that I will make you the best steak you've ever had, you can't complain about being hungry if you choose to stay home. If we ran into each other on a hike and I told you that a half mile up the trail is a beautiful waterfall, you can't be upset about not seeing it if you don't hike that last half mile, right? You have to work to find the reward. And pe- plenty of people will say yes to Jesus, but do not grab a hold of the rest that he promises because they're not willing to take the steps towards that promise. So am I saying that we have to work to earn God rest for our spirit? Absolutely not. The point is that the striving of the Christian life is to be intentional. It does require effort. It does require work. But this is work that is restful work. I quote him all the time, but Dallas Willard says that God is not against our effort. He's just against our earning, if that is the goal of our effort. And over the years, I have met so many faithful followers of Jesus. Some of them get up very, very early and sacrifice sleep to abide in Christ. Some work very, very long and hard days in the ministry. Some receive very little thanks for their work or praise for their faithful devotion. But yet, these people are marked by rest despite all of their work. This is because the work to grow closer to Jesus is restful work if we do it without a heart of earning. And so I do wonder if maybe a good way to think about this is like making a bed. The truth for me is that I can sleep anywhere. I've been homeless. I've lived in dirty apartments with way too many people. And growing up, I had four sisters. So like sometimes my bedroom was a closet underneath the stairs. And I loved it as a kid. But this Despite the sleeping conditions, I've grown accustomed to a made bed. And I love the feeling of fresh sheets and a nicely made bed. And so fluffing the pillows and changing the sheets and pulling up the covers tight, it's the work that you do to set you up for a good night's rest. And I think it's the same thing with the work of following Jesus, self-examination to see what about us is not in alignment with God's character and repenting of these things. It's making a bed to rest in. Intentionally loving our neighbors and putting others first. Making sacrifices of our resources and time. Seeking and pursuing Jesus in prayer and in worship. These are all a making of the bed to rest in. These are all a striving to enter the rest that God intends for us, as Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11 spells out. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. Connect with us online at bridgechurch.net. Have a great day.